Good afternoon. We are out here um, at the Island Inn Project. Usually you hear my voice on the Village Craftsman Facebook Live, but I am representing Ocracoke Alive and the Preservation Society uh, unofficially today um, on the Ocracoke Alive site. We're here, I'm going to turn the phone around in just a minute. We're here with David Tweedy, the, what's your, president? Executive Director of the Ocracoke Alive Board. And we're going to uh, be with Debbie Wells, who's been person in charge of the landscaping project. Um, so we're going to hear a little bit about what they've been doing and what's going on on Wednesday the 24th, 25th, 25th, sorry, Wednesday the 25th, we're going to have a little event out here at the Island Inn. Uh, Ocracoke Cook Preservation Society is going to show appreciation for what so many people have done and we're going to have an Ocracoke Cook Alive mural auction. So I am, we're going to show some of these lovely murals that you see in the background here in just a minute, but I'm going to go up uh, and talk to Debbie and Dave as soon as I figure out how to turn this around. There we go. Here we are. <laughs> They're sitting at these lovely benches and who's going to start? Debbie, you want to start? Debbie, why don't you start here? I'll start. I'm Debbie Wells and um, in January or February-ish of this year, uh, we went to OPS to ask them if they would be interested in us taking on uh, the landscape project for the entire complex. We presented them with a plan, we had a rough budget, we had some fundraising ideas, and they said yes, they'd be delighted if we would do that. So March is when it all kind of kicked off. We began by planting six live oak trees onto the site. And then we've done maybe three successive plantings since then, with the last one just wrapping up, uh, what, a month or so ago. And so now here we are at the end of the season, and the garden is actually looking really beautiful. We have blooms on camellia bushes. We have uh, flowers on the fence. We have acorns in our live oak trees by the dozens. And we have birds and butterflies, and we've even seen some frogs in here, believe it or not. So we're thrilled, nonetheless, to say. And um, so we're, we have uh, organized a gathering on Wednesday night, the 25th. Uh, that's two days, three days from today. Um, and basically this, it's called an evening at the Commons, and it is uh, for the whole town to come and celebrate what has happened here for our community. And it's specifically for the donors and friends, um, everyone who pitched in from the very beginning to make this thing happen. It has been a big, huge community event with so many people involved. Um, so we are looking really forward to that. We hope everybody turns out. It's going to be super simple, just free wine for everybody. Ooh. So that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's the plan, free wine. And I'm going to pan around just a minute for some folks who might not know exactly where we're talking about. We're at the Island Inn Commons. It's here on the corner of Lighthouse Road. Everybody knows Eduardo's. Uh, the this is, of course, on Ocracoke Island, North Carolina, too, in case you have no, <laughs> no idea, idea. <laughs> where you are right now. If you're following Ocracoke Alive, you probably know, <laughs> but if this gets shared, some people might not uh, know. So we're here, the uh, Moonraker Tea Shop, Spencer's Market, where Ty Moon is across the street. We've also got um, books to be read and uh, Deepwater Pottery, the Sorellas, and the Ocracoke Oyster Company. All, Public potties too, very important. Uh, we're gonna have more official ones later where this ramp goes up. But this is the project and the Preservation Society has uh, been in the process of purchasing it since 2018. Uh, there was a lot going on. They were planning to get the place lifted and, and a lot of work done. And then as many of you know, Hurricane Dorian hit and knocked us all for a loop and knocked those plans down for a while. But finally, we're back. We're back. back. A lot of background work has been done those last few years. And when we hit the ground, we hit the ground running. And I will say this, there's a tremendous amount of momentum for this whole project right now. And we are just riding the wave of that and very, very happy about it. And I don't think I said this garden event was 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Wednesday, October 25th, 5 p.m. All right. 
Babe, do you want to tell us what else is happening okay, Wednesday sure. at 5 p.m.? So, um, when the project uh, for the restoration of the historic island in uh, Okra Cove Preservation uh, very kindly took that on for the community, and as you can see, it now has a, a brand new roof there, and they started to work on the windows, and things are really rolling along. Along there, there um, are window sponsorships available window too. Sponsorships through OPS as well. Um, so uh, when OPS took on this project, it was a huge project for the community, and um, uh, our organization, Ochre Coke Alive, uh, which uh, our mission in the village is really has to do with community programming, a lot of it arts programming, uh, partnering with the school, partnering with different organizations here on the island. Um, we saw this community park and we're very excited about it. We're thinking about all the possible activities that could happen, community activities that could happen here. And so we really wanted to figure out a way in which we could help partner through our arts programming to maybe help draw some attention to their quest here to the restore the Island Inn as well as to develop this, uh, this beautiful park space here. And um, so, we were uh, we started approaching this was uh, in the fall of 22 we approached some community artists about a mural project um, asking them if they would like to create a mural on a four by four uh, four plank. foot by four foot four foot by four foot which is very important if you're going to be bidding on any of these that you know what you're working with um, so we got ten uh, community artists nine of them are here on the island and one of them is uh, from further afield but a, a, a extended member of the Oak Coke family uh, who were willing to, for a small stipend, create these wonderful works of art. The next stage of that is uh, Oak Coke Arts Week uh, 2023 under the direction of uh, Robert Chestnut, who's the uh, art teacher at Oak Coke School. Um, he uh, directed students in creating murals as well. We've got 12 murals on site from those Oak Coke students. So what we're going to do with those murals is on Wednesday um, from 5.30 to 7, we have a live silent auction that is going to be happening here on site for the 10 artist murals that we commissioned. Um, during that time period, uh, you can put in a bid if you're here on site. Um, we've also got 12 student murals that uh, you can become a sponsor from. Those are first come, first serve, and the sponsorship is $150. Now, if you can't make it to Okra Coke, you can still participate in this silent auction and the sponsorship through the Okra Coke Alive website. If you go to okracokealive.org, there's a link on the homepage there that will take you to an explanation of the silent auction. Um, now, through the evening, 9 p.m. on the 24th, which is uh, Tuesday, you can uh, send us an email and have a uh, online bid, essentially, for that silent auction. Whatever those online bids are, they will become the starting bid for the live silent auction on Wednesday. So and after this is done, we'll put a link in the comments so that you can go directly to that site. Uh, and we'll put a link to OPS the Okra Coke Preservation Society so you can go directly to the OPS site and see uh, a little more information about the island in as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so it's going to wind up that evening. Um, if you are the winner of one of these murals, you can take it home with you. You do have to come to the island to pick it up. They're rather large. We're not mailing them. Um, you could also uh, just choose to um, purchase it and then have your name attached to it and we could keep it here on site for a period of time as part of the art community space here at the community park. Um, and we also have some other options with those sponsorships of the murals going to Okra Cook School as well and becoming part of the new school there. Um, so uh, one thing that's so great about these murals as far as owning them or taking them home is that they can go outside. They can hang on your fence or the side of your house or on a patio or something like that. They're all acrylic on board. They'll, hand, they'll handle the weather really well. Fine. You can see from them being outside. So I thought we could go and take a quick round uh, walk around and we'll show you the 10 artist panels and some of the uh, student panels as well um, to look at and we'll wind up 
with a, a view of the historic island in. And maybe a little tour from Debbie yes, of the, the, the grounds and the gardens and who all has helped oh. take care of that. We'll do that after the murals come back around. That's good. One of the exciting things about uh, this partnership with Ocracoke Live and OPS that you might not know is that uh, the roots of Ocracoke Live actually started in a partnership with Preservation Society. Um, the Okra Folk Festival was started first under the umbrella of the Preservation Society. So we've long uh, had uh, a great affinity for this wonderful organization that's been very generous towards Okra Folk Alive. And so we kind of wanted to give back. Uh, this first uh, artist mural is by Kitty Mitchell. You may know of her as a uh, old member of Molasses Creek back in the heyday, um, but she is also an artist, has a gallery of her own here on the island. Um, and uh, She has Kitty Mitchell Studio, and she was the art teacher for how many years on Ocracoke? A long time. Longer than she probably will admit to. Yes, yes. <laughs> on the other side of it, uh, this is, well, this is a student. Um, um, this is one of the, oh, the Arts Week uh, um, murals. It's got a lot going on in there. Pretty cool. It does. It does. Um, so that is uh, available for a sponsorship. Um, another student uh, work from Arts Week. Appropriately located right next to the fishing one, although in the wrong order. The fishermen are going the fishing in the wrong direction. This is a, a, a piece by the, I mentioned the off-island artist who is a member of our community anyway, a uh, fellow by the name of Ken Barnhart. Um, now, he painted this uh, from a photograph uh, that on the Outer Banks was a pretty famous photograph uh, at the time, I think about 50 years ago. It was iconic. It, was, it appeared on postcards and calendars, and everybody up and down the Outer Banks knew this. Um, so after he painted this and we put it up, um, about a, a couple weeks later, somebody gave me a, a call, and he said that this was actually his father. And he identified there was a famous photo in which his father was in the foreground and uh, doing some beach fishing. And um, so it was neat that the, the came full circle that the family uh, of this fellow right here actually recognized this and got very excited about seeing it. That's fun. And Ken Barnhart spends a lot of time, Ken Arden spends a lot of time here on the island, have a house here. And This is another one of the student ones. Obviously, you can see uh, the theme for the murals that we asked the, the artists to consider, both the students and the adult artists, um, was on Ocracoke history, culture, or environment. So. This looks like it might be Blackbeard and Lieutenant Robert Maynard. Yeah. And coming up, Pirate Festival weekend, appropriate. Yeah. This is an uh, Ocracoke resident by uh, David Weiss. He tends to do more impressionistic uh, styles of painting, um, and uh, this one actually I think has a bit on it. It does. Already, so. This piece is by Sonia Allen. She's actually a member of our Ocracoke Alive uh, board, and she is uh, really uh, has dove into all sorts of arts things in our community since she moved here about two years ago I think they came uh, and she's got a little gallery on Creek Road that is open on occasion that you can pop in and see her work mm -hmm. too I think this one has a bid too yep this one does not have a bid but <laughs> it's got to stay there we can't move that one Sonia's daughter Myra is in high school here on the island and she is a wonderful artist this was one of the ones, if you came to the Okafo Festival this year, you might have seen this mural up. This, was, this is one of the murals that is for auction, even though she's a high school It is one of the, the hardest uh, pieces that we commissioned. If you've been to Okafoke uh, Fish House, you probably know Patty Plyler. And uh, this piece right here was done by her in honor of Nat Jackson. Oh, he was a, a fisherman here. If you if you knew that, then you probably recognize him. And she she did have a slight disclaimer the last time um, I went and talked with her. She said the numbers on his boat are wrong, and she needs to correct them. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody would probably know, but Patty. But knows. Patty knows. <coughs> this piece is by Ocracoke artist uh, Barbara Adams. 
In the past, Barbara has uh, done some of the artwork as Debbie Wells has for the Open Book Festival. Uh, and you probably recognize a lot of her art around the community. Uh, she said that this was in honor of the Mountain Boy Scout troop, but it was also in reference she used her father as part of the inspiration for this. And this was from a photograph of her father. Uh, and she did some research on um, the uh, World War II beach sand pounders and um, so she tried to recreate the saddle and everything as they would have been. Cool. Shall we go back around this way? Got a few more to look at. Uh, just pan over the student ones. Mm -hmm. um, here we've got that one's got a sponsorship. Yep that's sponsored already. This, this is, one's sponsored already. This one, I love the ice cream cones. Mm -hmm. And we've got, is this the last? No. Two more artist panels? Yes. So this one right here is uh, Ocracoke resident Abby Manai. I'm going to go up here just a little bit so we don't have, yeah. And uh, it looks to me like inspiration from Springer's Point. It definitely looks like Springer's Point. And some of the black shadowing in there you see is actually the oak tree shadow. Um, but there is still a silhouette of the tree in there, too. And our final pieces are over here. And then we're going to take a tour of the garden. This is another piece by Myra Adams. Alan. Alan, sorry. The, uh, um, our, our student uh, artist. That's cool. She started that one at the festival too, I think. Yeah, she painted this one live at the festival, festival this year. Anything on the back side? Um, yes, something. Yes. It's you can't get around very much. There is another uh, student. student one. Oh, that's nice too, with a fairy in the background. All right, so you can go. We'll put the link down later, ochrecookalive.org, where you can uh, bid on these or come on out on Wednesday, October 25th. Coming up. Live silent auction from 5.30 to... 5. Oh, starts well, at 5. Starts at 5. Auction, at auction anytime from 5.30 right. to 7. And we're going to hand it back over to hand Debbie back here. back to Debbie. find out more about the... the so party. tell us what you've done. This is fabulous. Okay, so first of all, I want to... Um, I want to let everybody know that my partner in crime with this uh, whole uh, thing right here was um, my good friend Kathy Koss, who uh, owns Southern Rain in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. She is an... She's a landscape miracle worker. She has gardens all over the triangle that she cares for and develops. And she was kind enough uh, to offer her help before I ever got involved with OPS. When she said she would help me do this, I was talking to her about it, how I'd love to do it. She said, I'll help you. As soon as she said those words, I knew I was gonna go talk to them. Oh, so cool. it would never have happened if it hadn't been for her. She's a dear, lovely person and she'll be here tomorrow. For the week and is bringing more plants so we have another van <laughs> load we've got a whole big planting uh party planned for tuesday to get mostly she's bringing um native perennials uh with her this time so we're going to bump up our native perennial stock in here um with some marshmallow and some uh some of the um, monarch butterfly milkweed and uh, I don't know what all else, but she sent me a picture of the van. It was loaded. I was like, oh, God, here we go. Yeah. And you've had a great crew of locals that oh, have. Yes. Oh, yes. Like Raul Campos uh, has been like, I couldn't say enough things about him, how much he's helped. He's done all of our construction, built the benches, the arbors, um, the fence. And, and all these were sponsorships, right? People oh, have sponsored and have, if you go around and see the little name tags yes. of people who've have helped with this That's project correct. it spans not just ocracoke but That's as correct. we know with your friend kathy right. all across the state all over. And, and across the country a friend from uh, chapel hill who has a rock quarry on his property dug these rocks for us so we could put plaques in front of all the oak trees oh, on cool. the rocks. This right here he's coming also for the party so we've got a good contingent coming from chapel hill for the gathering on wednesday so the oaks were sponsorships too the oaks were sponsorships that's correct there you go and all of the uh all of the benches arbors fences um you know we've been we've been working that's great and we had a we had tremendous 
community support, which has just been really great. So, you know, look at our Joe Bells. We're proud to call them the happiest Joe Bells in the town. They look beautiful. They're just doing amazing. And all of these were transplanted into this site from over there in the Drainfield area. So we moved them all in January. They wintered over in my yard at home. And then we put them here into the garden around March. And they've just really responded and done great. They really bloomed. They really, really <laughs> did. And, um, you know, we've got a lot of lantana. You can see our roses are blooming. Are these okra coke roses, what uh, I call them? Or are they, they are, if they are, I'm not sure. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Kathy would have to tell you all of that. We are trying to find that little single petal pink and white rose um, that is so uh, indigenous to okra coke. And we're getting there. We just haven't quite got it in here yet. And she's done a lot of grasses, of course, of... Uh, you I know, see wax myrtle wax over there. Wax myrtles, blue and yellow, eastern cedars. Are we um, going to have any yopon? Uh, yes, well, we have a, a weeping one there, but we've probably got more coming, and then there are dwarfs in here everywhere. Okay. Um, and uh, we've got junipers, that little thing right there on Let's the very walk end over of to that it. bed. That's called a thunderhead black Japanese pine. These are coastal pines. Um, We're talking about this one this right one here. Yep. Mm -hmm from the other side of the world. And this is a dwarf variety. It's probably the most exotic thing in the garden. It'll get probably about this tall, but it'll get really big Okay. also. And um, we've got Gara, which actually is a native wildflower. It grows all up in the park. If you walk up there, you'll see them in the park along the side of the road. Um, Rebecca, of course. Uh, and let's see. We've got purple sage over here, like, a, a, like the Russian pur purple sage. Um, Beautiful. Uh, I know. Uh, blueberries. Blueberries. Ten blueberry bushes in here. Uh, a southern high bush blueberry that had fruit on it this year. They don't look the greatest right now. I don't really know what blueberries do. I need to study up on them more. But hopefully they're going to come back again in the spring and do really well. And there'll be a whole fig garden. There will yes. be a whole fig orchard going right down that way across the back of the property. So it's still a lot of mulch that. and sand and yes, construction awesome. debris, but... Yeah, all of that is for our next phase going that way. Which and Chester Lynn is uh, right. so Chester generously Lynn. donated about 35 fig trees, uh, six different varieties, which we've got wet, wintered out there for the time being. Um, we're just trying to stabilize them through the winter and then uh, Debbie will... And we'll if you figure out where they're going to go. That's right. We're going to we're going to re reset all of them in the next, uh, I would say, three to four months. Awesome. And if you have questions, Chester's a great one to go to with Absolutely. questions about the Island Inn. He used to manage the restaurant that was here. Right. The Preservation Society is a great place to go to ask questions about how they can contribute or what they can do for not just this location, but the Preservation Society itself. They just had a festival, the first yesterday. Working Waterman's yep. Festival at the Preservation Society mm -hmm. yesterday that uh, some of the funds go to help this project and the museum itself. Right. And so there's a lot. There's a lot going on. A lot going on. And we're doing... Uh, yeah, on Halloween, uh, not Halloween, Halloween night, but... Uh, 29th. 29th, 29th of, October. of October, which is Sunday. Um, so uh, from today. Amy Howard and yeah. myself are going to do some ghost stories. Uh, right. Maybe the, right here. One of the first events to happen right now. Well, here. besides the besides Wednesday the 25th. Yeah. Yeah. So one other thing I want to show you real uh -huh. quick is r put your camera right over here on this uh, purple mooly grass. Mooly ah. grass, I guess it's called. So this is a native that grows all over Okra Coke up in the, uh, along the side of the road and in the park. And we've got some splendid specimens of that in here. Two there and two Does or three it more spread? Uh, I don't know if it'll spread or not. I need to ask my trusty landscaper Kathy. All right. But, um, hopefully it will. I don't know. I don't know. So go over the events that we've got. We just had the Watermans, which you missed, but coming up is Wednesday night, evening at the Commons, Sunday night, ghost stories with Amy and David at the Commons. So it's Wednesday the 25th of October, Sunday the 29th of October, both starting at five o'clock. Nope. The no. Ghost stories is 7 p.m. 7 p.m. So it's Wednesday the 25th at 5. Ghost to come out. Right. <laughs> Sunday the 29th at 7. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, we'll 
go to um, okracocolive.org to uh, check out the murals and to put your bids in. Um, and, but just to let you know, even because Okracoco Live is partnering with OPS on this project, the funds raised through that auction are going towards the project here towards OPS. So. And you can follow the garden on um, OPS website. Go to the Isleman project, to the landscape, and there's a Facebook page link that she keeps up with really well about whatever we're up to. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you guys, and we hope to see you uh, at another date. To, to learn more about what's going on. So hope everybody has a lovely day. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you, David.